thing I absolutely learned while I was in Riga is just how quickly the weather can change. I can get up in the morning and it's cold, wet and snowy like this. A couple of hours later I've come out from a cafe and it's glorious sunshine, no sign of snow. It does however make the place very pretty. Now Riga is very walkable, although there are cars on lots of the streets, it's very easy to cross and it's very easy to get around, so you can see all of the sights on foot without ever needing to get into a taxi or a bus. Just like these parks here, there are lots of great views and great buildings, including the Central Market. The Central Market in Riga is a traditional market for meat, cheese, fruit and things like that. Not really a tourist market, so to speak, but there are lots of things to browse and to buy. Please do try as much as you like. There are some great chocolate in here, great cheese, and obviously if you are staying longer and staying in your own place, help yourself to some of the meat and things and cook with it. But if you're just visiting or at a hotel, you probably don't want a lamb chop. So come in here, get a sample size portion of some of these cakes or some of the cheeses, or if you try some of the House of the Blackheads uh, is a museum here in Riga. It's a great place to come and visit if you are here for enough time. As you can see, it's absolutely stunning. You'll see some pictures uh, in the vlog. Um, three floors in the museum. There's the downstairs, which is a medieval cellar, where you can see how it was in medieval times. The main floor is sort of historical cabinets, so you can see where um, people, sort of like secretaries of state, have visited and uh, seen Riga. And then at the top floor is beautiful, elegant ballroom be able to visit those as well get some great pictures i've just been to the gift shop myself bought myself some nice black balsam so that is the local special drink here in riga it's a, uh, a sort of a liqueur aperitif uh, they often drink it in a shop before dinner um, so i bought myself a small bottle to try at some point um, it's a beautiful day as you can see um, yeah having a great time here in riga and uh, enjoying the sight so hopefully you are too enjoying the sights, not the building works back there, but the museum, pretty pretty museum. I'm going to try and see some more museums through my trip um, and some art galleries as well, so stay tuned. The original building here of the House of the Blackheads was erected during the first half of the 14th century for the Brotherhood of Blackheads, which was a guild of unmarried merchants, ship owners and foreigners in Riga. Major works were done in the early 17th century, adding most of the ornamentation to the outside and the sculptures were made by the worship of August Vaults. Additionally, it's the site of the first ever decorated Christmas tree, which was erected here in 1510. The building was bombed to an absolute ruin by the Germans on June 28, 1941, a week after the launching of Operation Barbarossa, and the remains were demolished by the Soviets in 1948. It was then rebuilt between 96 and 1999 with funds provided by Valeris Kargins, the president of Parex Bank. Part of the funds donated were from all the people who wanted to participate in the rebuilding process by joining in the event I Build the House of the Blackheads, where by donating five lats, that's approximately 7 to 11 euros, they could symbolically put a brick in the wall. There were more than 5,000 participants and the House of the Blackheads was officially opened on December 9th, 1999. Today, the House of the Blackheads is a museum. As you can see in these pictures, the historical cellar is the only part of the building that was originally original and survived World War II and the Soviet occupation. Until the early 1990s, it was buried underground and not visible. This historic cellar is one of the few places where it's possible to walk through an authentic underground of old Riga, where the remains, wall fragments, floor, and even the wooden stairs are original. And some of that is dated as far back as the 14th century. This was also former storage for goods, and part of it was space for a hypercourse or a warm air furnace. And today, as you can see, there are lots of interesting interactive exhibitions relating to commerce in Riga and the history of the Brotherhood. The upper level, as you can see here, are grand ballrooms, where historically many luxurious events such as welcoming ceremonies for kings, queens and presidents have happened, as well as cultural events like balls, classical music concerts, theatre and operas with some famous guest stars.
Other sites you may see while walking around Riga include this one, the Freedom Monument. This is a monument that is guarded by armed police because it is such an important representation of Latvia. This represents the independence of Latvia from the Soviet Union. One of the most striking parts of Riga is its architecture. You'll have the Art Nouveau buildings mixed in with the medieval buildings, mixed in with the modern buildings, all in the same street. And as you wander around, you see places that look grand, some places that look very old, some places that look really run down. It can be a bit of a mixed bag, but everything is unique and everything is beautiful here. As well as the towers, such as the powder tower that you just saw, there are a lot of churches, cathedrals, and sort of guild halls that you can see in Riga. They love a good grand building, and you could spend the entire day just taking beautiful photos of beautiful buildings here in Riga. I recommend stopping here at the Key to Riga. It's a great little cafe with a great menu and lots of great drinks. And as I said earlier in the video, the weather changed very quickly. This was a sunny day, that glorious sunshine, suddenly 